Okay, so a little while ago I put out this video saying that this was the cheapest F7 flight controller I could find in Banggood, and I got a lot of comments saying that it was no longer the cheapest one. At the time I did my research, it was a while back, this was the one that was the cheapest, and I got it on a flash sale actually for even less than what it is currently. It's currently $31, and I believe on the flash sale I got it for $20.99. Um, yeah, but however, uh, it's still $31 right now. And there's actually a couple ones here that I got that are probably, I guess, cheaper. There's actually two versions of this. I'll talk about that here in a second. And I'll talk about some of the differences here between this one and these two new ones. So uh, you can see the other video if you want details on that. I will talk about some of the differences here in a second. But this is the new one that, that will claim the title of cheapest F7 flight controller. There's actually, you can see they're very similar. It comes in two versions. A acro version and a deluxe version so the actually let me flip this over like this so they're the same orientation so it's named made by this company called a jhem i believe and the, the flight controller is called the jhef7 um and you can see they look pretty much identical so the one on the left is the acro version and it's a cheaper one and then it comes in at 24 dollars um, and the one on the right is the deluxe version and that comes in at $31. And the main differences between these two is, well, there's three main differences. Uh, the deluxe version comes with the MPU 6000 gyro on top of the 32K gyro, whereas the acro version only comes with the 32K gyro and no MPU 6000. Uh, the uh, deluxe version also comes with a barometer and also 16 megabytes of uh, black box data chip. So let me just show you where the components are missing on the Acro, the cheaper version. So the MPU 6000 is right here on the deluxe version. And I see it's missing over here on the Acro version. And then there is a barometer somewhere here. So right here there's a small little chip or something called a barometer. It's right there. On the deluxe version and on the acro version you see that it's missing there and then the black box chip is right here on the deluxe version and that is missing on the acro version so that's why it's cheaper it's uh exactly seven dollars cheaper so um since you can see that everything else is identical we'll go ahead and we'll stop talking about the acro version if you don't need a uh, black box data or a barometer and if you're happy with a 32k gyro which is going to be totally fine with the vibration dampening on 8k then yeah the cheaper $24 version should do fine for a basic build uh, but if you want the dual gyros you should be able to switch between the MPU 6000 and the 32k gyro and also the 16 megabytes of black box data and the barometer then go for the $31 um, deluxe version here and yeah the name of the company is called JH. EMCU, as that's the name right there. And then the differences between here, uh, the deluxe version here, which is $31, and this is also, so the, the previous cheapest one is also $31. This one uh, only comes with the 32K gyro, no MPU 6000. Uh, it doesn't come with a black box chip, but it does come with a micro SD card. So you could put a really large micro SD card in there for black box recording, whereas you're limited to 16 megabytes on the uh, JHME and CU version here. Um, and obviously the, the board layout is totally different. You've got through holes on this on this one here, um, which some people might prefer. And on the deluxe the version here, you got the very large solder pads. So those are the main differences. And so I'll just go ahead and I'll just show you all of the, the layout here. Uh, all the solder pads are pretty large and everything is nicely labeled. You can see here, so they have a Basically, on the corners here, you have the signal two, signal four. This is all the motor um, pads or the for the signals. So you have uh, signal one there, signal three here. So I think the orientation is going to be like this here. Yeah. So the board's going to go forward. Is that way up? So motor one's going to be here, motor two here, three here, and four here. So that's normal. USB port pointing off to the side. That's normal. Um, if you are not using four individual ECs, you have the uh, JST connector here for your uh, 4 in 1 EC. So you got your VBAT current sensor, ground 5 volts, and then your 
four motor outputs S3, 1, 4, and 2. So obviously you're going to have to rearrange your plug if it's different from this layout here so that it matches, otherwise you're going to damage the board. And then you got your little plug here for your buzzer and LED. These are, I think these are one millimeter pitched GSD connectors. And um, this board has its own target in Betaflight. It's called uh, JH uh, EF7 Dual. And it'll, it'll work for both of them. This uh, The boards came with uh, 355 flash on them, but 402 and all of these versions are currently uh, available in Betaflight Configurator if you want to upgrade. So if you're worried about the target, not a problem. It will upgrade to the latest version. This board also does come with uh, six available UARTs. So yeah, plenty of UARTs here. Obviously it's an F7 and then you don't have any of those silly issues with inversion. So yeah, all the uh, UARTs here are going to be broken out. You have a T2 here, RC2. Uh, I think that's going to be for your receiver. And then you have additional UARTs over here. T4, R4. And on this side over here it's interesting you have motor outputs for five and six if you have if you're building an optocopter i suppose and then you have additional pads here on the other side as well rssi ground vtx ground five volts uh, r3 t3 five volts ground and it's all nicely labeled and pretty self-explanatory you have scl sd for compass here so that's still plenty of things to connect to no should be any problem um, finding connections here for all of your uh, different uh, accessories and components that you want to attach this receiver, GPS, compass, etc. etc. It's all going to be uh, use, uh, basically you're not going to have any issues finding a place to connect up uh, your component to this board with the six available UARTs. Okay, so a couple more things to note is that this board does have a dual camera support. So they have these two pads here for C1 and C2. So you can attach two different cameras on here and be able to switch between the two. And then this also has a 5 volt and an 8 volt regulator. So there's a 5 volt 2 amp regulator on here for your normal things like your receiver, buzzer, and LEDs. And then there is an 8 volt 3 amp regulator on here for your camera and your VTX. And there is a 8 volt pad here on this side over here, right here. So it's next to the VTX, obviously. So you have VTX ground, and then this one here outputs 8 volts. So it's kind of nice. It has, um, I know a lot of people like either the 8 volt or the 9 volt regulators for your video transmitter and camera, and this board does support that. So it's a pretty nice feature. Hey, Albert from the future here. Just want to let you guys know that uh, the camera uh, feature and the uh, 8 volt feature are switchable via an aux channel using the user 1, user 2 feature in Betaflight. Uh, the 8 volt is actually off by default, so you can just set the entire range of the aux channel um, to be on, and then uh, if you, it doesn't even have to be an aux channel you use or assign to a switch, it'll be on all, all the time. Just make sure you uh, set it up like you see in the diagram here, and then you can switch between C1 and C2 if you want to use camera switching uh, via the aux channel as you can see in the diagram above. Okay, so this is the weight of the deluxe version. I'm sure people are going to be asking. 7.58 grams, and the acro version is a little light because it's got three less components, 7.39 grams. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. Uh, yeah, that definitely, I'm pretty sure that this one is going to be, this video is going to be outdated as soon as I upload it. Someone will uh, tell me that they found yet another cheaper uh, F7 flight controller. If you do, definitely let me know. I'll try and acquire that. Uh, if it's cheaper than $24 for a really basic one like here you have uh, with just the uh, 32K gyro, yeah, definitely let me know because I do want to let people know about them. That's why I'm making these videos. Uh, if you're looking for, you know, uh, budget components for your build, and especially now that F7s are going to, I think, going to be more popular now uh, going forward, and they're getting cheaper. So let's, uh, definitely uh, uh, let me know in the comments below if you find something that is a better deal than this one for sure. Anyway, guys, hope you found the video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.